Hello and welcome to this fast track tutorial on level design with GIS data. We will cover creating a real world scene with 20 square kilometers, procedural weight maps, ground vegetation, rivers, road buildings and trees. We will use the landscaping plugin for the procedural generation, but you don't need the plugin. The project is available as free download with plugin related data and with the landscape as pure world partition. Also, the static meshes for roads, rivers and buildings are included in the download. In the design process, there is also other free content involved, which can be downloaded from the Unreal Engine Marketplace. So, nice, I would say, and let's get started right away. The first step is to import the geotiffs, which hold the height data. They will be imported as landscape in a world partition level aka open world level. We will assign a landscape material on import. The material is also part of the package. You can download free. The material is a variant of Unreal Sensei's landscape material with some adaptations and improvements. I'll cover that later in depth. The process is pretty straightforward. After selecting the files, we choose an area to import. We can set the world partition cell size and a couple of other options. I'll not go into all details here, like scaling and smoothing the landscape. The default options are just perfect for what we want in this case. After the import is done, we will set the lights. First, we have to save the level. takes a short while and after this message we can assume everything worked fine. So we go on and uh, set the lights, the skylight, the sky atmosphere and the directional light is sunlight. This scene uh, will be rendered in Lumen, so we can uh, enable real-time capture here. With the light, we can have a look at the landscape. It is very detailed because we imported high-quality geotiffs with 0.5 meter resolution. After saving our level, we will build the landscape to get rid of the screen error messages. This will also create the streaming proxies ex as external actors. Unreal Engine 5 uses one file per actor principle, as you might already know. So these actors are saved out as actors one by one. The next step is importing the free assets from the Unreal Engine Marketplace. We will use a free asset pack for foliage and one for creating spline-based buildings. We will find the links in the description. We will also have a look at the landscape material after that. So this is for the procedural buildings. And now we will have a closer look on the landscape material. This material is a flavor of Unreal Sensei's material, as I already mentioned. It is included in the free download project. First, we want to assign the grass types the assets are included in the content we just downloaded from the marketplace. We need two different grass types, one for the grass layer and one for the forest layer. After assigning the grass types, the corresponding paint layers are populated with the foliage. We will cover how to generate ma uh, weight maps to have different vegetation a little bit later. Before that, I want to show you how, what's cool about this variant of the landscape material. We'll open it and here you have three texture slot per layer, per paint layer. And in the third one, you can um, assign the ORD texture. 
pixel textures can be plugged into the texture slots. The albedo and the normal and the ORD, which stands for occlusion, roughness and displacement. So you have all Quixel Bridge textures at your disposal. They are all compatible with the landscape material. So changing the look of the material is as easy as it can get. One note for after downloading the textures, they will be virtual, marked by VT on the corner. Right click on the textures and converting them to regular textures is the only thing you, you gotta do to use it with the material. We are almost good for go for creating the weight maps. One thing we should check before is if our shapefile data aligns with the imported landscape. In order to do this, I use the waterways shapefile from the Geofabric shapefiles in order to see if the rivers are actually aligning with the riverbeds. Other shapes which have significant landmarks will also be just fine. But I will stick to the waterways shapefile. We can set the scale here to get an exact match. The debug view of the landscaping plugin lets us see the shapefiles data before we actually input it. The scale is adjusted on the landscaping infos actor. This step is optional. The data from Geofabric, however, are derived from OpenStreetMap data and so not have as much points than data from, um, for instance, a local administration or if you have high quality shapefiles, this step can be omitted. But here we want to make sure that we have a close match with the landscape and we will have to have uh, have to make some editing afterwards. Again, this is optional, but um, we deal here with um, shape files which have not that many points, so we have to do this to save time later. Well, that is fine. So we can import polygon shape files to create weight maps. In the landscaping dialog, we open the landscape material options pop up and can select multiple files. Here we will choose land use, buildings and water. Water is different than waterways. Water will give us polygons for lakes, glaciers and broad rivers, while waterways are just line strings of streams, rivers and the like. The material is already assigned because we did this earlier on the landscape import. Also, the default layer is fine in this case. Land use types are the types of land use found in the shapefile and can be assigned to the material layer here. For buildings, I choose mud here, which is the best fit from what's available. All matching layers are already pre-selected. So if the name of the layer matches uh, the attribute of F class in the shapefile, it's pre-selected. And after clicking replace the according, Areas are calculated and paint layers are assigned. We can see here the different shades of green. This green is grass and the lighter green is material blend, which is basically forest ground and rocks. Next, we import the rivers. The order of the steps in this tutorial is kind of mandatory because after importing rivers we will also add to paint the riverbed so having the overall weight maps created before is the most efficient way of doing things in procedural level design so after designing the river mesh and setting the scale that's basically all we have to do here the rest is only fine tuning we import all rivers at once The message indicates we should save and load. This is due to a bug in Unreal Engine. We will not see the river mesh right after import. The spline is visible, but we have to save and reload the level before the mesh of the spline becomes visible. On reload, the map check shows up indicating errors. They can be ignored for now. They say that not spatially loaded actors are referenced by spatially loaded ones. We'll need this reference these references during editing and we will convert the splines to static meshes in the end, which will erase the references anyway, so ignoring the errors here is safe. We can see the rivers 
already floating, but due to the fact that our data is not as accurate as our landscape, some edits are needed. I'll show you how I work with Unreal Engine built-in tools and some convenient add-ons from the landscaping plugin to make the river look more natural. It would be easy to just carve the riverbed along the spline, however this will not give us the best natural looking result. But we will use this technique as well where it fits. What I do here is going from one end of the river to the other end and move splines around, add new spline points and adjust the height and width of the river to better fit the water riverbed which is already here from the height data. In this case, the riverbed is pretty good, so it is not necessary to alter the height of the landscape. In other parts, we will see that we can sink the riverbed pretty easily into the landscape. And of course, we can also use landscape edit layers, but also for performance reasons, it is not the first choice. So we will using normal splines here and work from them and we will convert them into static meshes in the end. Important for painting a riverbed with landscape material paint layers is to have enough points along the spline in order to prevent straight sections. In the download project you'll see that in some parts of the river this was omitted and as you can see here, it will cause the river bed to be straight. By having enough spline points, the river will smooth along a curve. And of course, it is always possible to adjust the paint layer by hand to make corrections. With Ctrl Z to undo a not so satisfying outcome, we are also safe while editing the river bed. For example, when the river has arms like these, we can play some tricks to make it look better. For the situation where we have two rivers building three arms, it is best to make one arm broader, let the other one just flow in the bed and paint the river bed by hand. One thing when it comes to painting river beds along a spline is that the grass type will still be there from the old paint layer. To get rid of it, we use the foliage remove paint layer which is a non-weight blended layer and click on the riverbed in order to remove it. This is just another Unreal Engine bug, unfortunately, but fortunately we can solve this easily. One click per landscape component will update the paint layer and remove the misplaced foliage. As I said earlier, the more spline points the spline has, the smoother the painting of the riverbed Tangents are not taken into account and therefore the curves of the spline are not perfectly reflected by the painted riverbed. Although this does not strike the eye as much during runtime, the kind of flooded areas right and left of the river, I think they will give some natural look, but by painting it, it will be more beautiful or just adding additional spine points. To carve a riverbed, we can use the tools provided by the landscaping plugin. Set the offset to minus 100. Deform the landscape with lower height enabled. And set the offset back to 80. The outcome is a beautiful looking riverbed. To finish the river setup, we will spawn procedural stones along the riverbed. First, we have to enable procedural foliage in the editor settings. We will see here we have a missing asset type. And by enabling procedural foliage in the editor setting, we will have this additional asset type available.
We will use the stones provided by the package we imported earlier. Conveniently, they are already prepared as static mesh foliage, so we can just plug it into the list. The assets are under the SDF directory under pack 03 Landscape Pro Environment Foliage. We will use them and will assign them here in the foliage type list. We choose rocks medium. In order to make them stick in the ground, we will edit the set offset and some other properties. We can bulk edit via the property matrix, so we don't have to go through them one by one. So first, we will edit the set offset to make them stick into the ground. This stone should also be spawned with random yaw and steep angles. Also, we have to make sure that the stones are only spawned in the riverbed. We can archive these by set the inclusion and exclusion layers accordingly. The inclusion layer is water and the exclusion layers are all other layers. This is also um, showing why the order of the steps is important. We have to paint the paint layers of the riverbed before we want to spawn the river stones. Because if there is no water layer, then the stones cannot be spawned on the water layer. For the first iteration we are good, we can save the assets and then spawn them. Landscaping come with a con comes with a convenient function to make the procedural foliage volume span across our whole landscape. Of course the volume can also be created through the place actor panel, but when we have to set the location and scale by hand, when we use this convenient function, we can spawn them and it will encompass the whole landscape. After spawning the world, partition is unloaded and we have to load it again. This is mainly due to them make it possible to have huge areas where parts of the level will be automatically loaded and unloaded to not exhaust the system's memory. In the details of the procedural foliage volume, we will check only allow landscape. And then we simulate the procedural foliage. This will take a while, but we skip the waiting time and have a look. As you can see, the stones are not scattered very dense, so we make some corrections to accumulate more stones in the riverbed. In order to get there, we reduce the collision and shade radius and enable grow in shade and spawns in shade. After clicking Resimulate on the procedural foliage volume, we will have an outcome with more dense stones, as you can see here. After this, we will have a look at the render settings. We do this to make the overall experience more performant, as well to get rid of the motion blur and the grass types. The settings are not exposed in the project settings, so we have to edit the default engine ini and the default editor ini. The motion blur problem is related to Lumen in Unreal Engine 5, so the settings will work with other projects as well. Maybe they fix it in the future. Maybe 5.1 already has it fixed, but this will not save the motion blur on trees. 
what we do here. But I'll show you how to fix the motion blur on trees later. The ini files are part of the free download. I just show you here how to do it if you want to use the settings in other projects. There are really very much options which go here in the ini files and then we have a better foliage rendering in place. We will import the roads. The landscape import weightness and reveal are now finished. For demonstration purposes, we will import one big road here only in the download. There are also paths included. Uh, they are painted along splines. They don't have ashes for themselves. But for the main road, there is um, a free mesh for the road included in the free download. Also, it's part of the landscaping plugin. We will use it as static mesh for the spline mesh. There are two other options when spawning from shape files. Paint layer, deform landscape is one of them for painting a path without a spline. But for the main road, we use spline mesh. In the options, we assign the mesh and set to width. In the debug view, we can see here the roads where the roads are situated. We can choose the kind of road we want to spawn. It's the main road we already said. We want to spawn just one road. This is located in the center of our level here. You can see it in red. After the import, we will do have some cleanup work. Edit the road, which means connecting the segments, adjust the height to make a street shoulder and get rid of the foliage growing on the road surface. By connecting the segments, we will get a nice bridge over a stream. The workflow is pretty similar to the river workflow, but when working with roads, we will make use of the landscape deform feature right from the beginning. The feature where we carved the river into the riverbed here we do the opposite, we make street shoulders. With importing shapefiles we have the advantage to lay out the road quickly and are still free to make corrections afterwards. These ordinary splines have another advantage over landscape splines. They do not deform the landscape automatically, so they are more performant because they do not need landscape edit layers. And, of course, they can also be baked into static meshes. I let you watch in which order you have to edit the spline in order to get nice results fast. Our setup will not be complete without buildings. Like rivers and roads, we let the buildings generate procedurally from shapefiles. First we make a child blueprint of the procedural buildings generate the blueprint. Open the child blueprint and set the spline to closed.
Then we add another story, so we have a two-story building. Compile, save and close the blueprint. After loading the shapefile, we can check with the debug view where the buildings will be generated. Select the buildings shapefile and we can have a look. The red polygons showing us where the buildings will be generated. Here we can enable and disable the debug view. So we have a preview of what will be generated where. We select the actor blueprint options and assign the child blueprint we just created. We do not need an auxiliary actor because the building generator has a deform landscape capability by itself. If you generate other blueprints, this auxiliary actor, auxiliary actor will provide deform landscape capability. But here we don't need it. We create the building. It is important to have a um, spine point type set to linear as well as align the point horizontally so that the building not gets screwed on slopes of the landscape. We will afterwards flatten the landscape so the building is not standing in the air or sticking in the ground. We will come to this after the import is finished. As always, with the spline imports, the results are shown only after saving and reloading the level. So don't wonder if you don't see the whole buildings after the import straight away. To prevent having parts of the buildings floating in the air, we can flatten the landscape. We will figure out which values are best here, first on one building. Yeah, this is fine. So we can um, bulk flatten the landscape for all buildings. Unfortunately, the bulk processing does not always work correctly. Unreal Engine somehow has problems to calculate all heights when the splines are closed or entangled. Nevertheless, in this case, we can select all buildings and flatten the landscape for all at once. We will have two artifacts uh, in the landscape, but you will see they are not severe. We fix them by hand quickly. Also, this is uh, a lot faster than select every of these 80 buildings by hand and flatten the landscape for every building one by one. We have one artifact here. We can choose the sculpt tools and smooth them out. And here we have a second artifact inside the river. We also use the sculpt tool and get rid of this artifact to have the landscape in its original condition. Our scene would not be complete without a forest. Similar to the river stones, we leverage the procedural foliage spawner to have a nice forest. We will pick the trees from the landscape pro package as we did this with the stones for the river.
After having the content import completed, we will make some visual enhancements. By adding exponential height fog and post-process volume. Also, we need to add a volumetric cloud visual effect to give the sky a more natural look. Make sure to set uh, unbound on the post-processed volume by setting infinite extent to true. By doing so, we have the volume affecting our whole scene. On the post-process volume, we change the exposure and add a lens flare. If you like, you can also add one of the lookup tables under color grading MISC, color grading LUT, Unreal Engine comes with four different lookup tables to match each time of day. As said earlier, you have to do one extra configuration to get rid of the motion blur on our trees. The motion blur happens in conjunction with the lumen light setup, but it is easy to fix. We select the static mesh foliage of our trees, our pine trees, and can bulk edit them via the property matrix uh, again. On the instant settings, we have to set the mobility to movable. Because we use lumen, movable is totally fine and will not impact the performance. This will result in the correct calculation of the light in the material. In order to gain performance, we will convert the splines to static meshes. The process is straightforward. We only have to select the spline and from the actor menu we choose from act merge actors merge actor settings. Make sure to check the replace source actors so that the spline will automatically be replaced by the new created static mesh. We will do this for all rivers, the road and every building. If working on a level, make sure to back up or check in to source control before performing this step. Also from this forward, it is no longer possible to make edits to the splines and the editing options for deforming the landscape or paint layers are also gone. So please make sure that everything looks like you want to have it. The newly created meshes can also be converted to support Nanite. Just right click on the static mesh in the content drawer and enable Nanite to get Nanite support. From Unreal Engine 5.0 on, landscapes also support Nanite. I will not cover it here, it is easy to convert a landscape to Nanite. Just click on the landscape and search for Nanite in the details panel. In the final section of the video, I will give you an overview what is in the free download package. You will get three levels. The first one will be loaded when you open the project. It is called Tutorial Landscape. It has a single landscape with the landscape material applied. The landscape does not have any modifications whatsoever. It is like it in the Geotiffs, it's a plain landscape. It is also a world partition and will only be visible when loading the world partition, either over the world partition tab or by clicking on the pin icon in the outliner. The second one is tutorial SM. In this level, all the assets are converted to static meshes, therefore SM. The only thing missing is the forest and the river stones. The procedural foliage spawners are included also with a static mesh foliage for every spawner, which has all the settings necessary to achieve the result you saw in the tutorial. Just replace the cube with the rocks medium for the river spawner and with the, with the pine trees for the forest spawner and re-simulate on the procedural foliage volume. For a third level named simply tutorial, you need the landscaping plugin. It contains all splines, and all other landscaping generated content. You can get it on the Unreal Engine Marketplace. Thanks for tuning in. Feel free to ask any questions in the comments. And as always, see you soon.